and we should be live. Welcome to the first episode of Inside Security. Um, my name is Mikael Anstedt. Uh, I have a guest with me, uh, Matthias. Welcome. Thank you. So, um, why are we here? What's, what's this about? Um, so basically, this is a, a project that I came up with this week, sort of, or, or last weekend. And I mean, why not? Why not do a show? Why not talk about security? Um, why not uh, talk about subjects that we find interesting, right? Uh, and I'll just introduce myself to start with. Um, I live in Sweden, born and raised in Sweden. I work at TrueSec as a um, level three SOC analyst. So that's the security operations center. And I do threat hunting as well. And we will come into those subjects a lot more later, I think. Because you, Matthias, you want to introduce yourself as well. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and thank you for having me, Michael. Um, my name is Matthias, Matthias Borg, and I work um, uh, at OneWin uh, here in Sweden. and. Um, my primary focus is uh, both working our uh, MDR service uh, with the same thing as you, you Michael, uh, threat hunting and uh, uh, some custom detections and, and such, and also some consulting work with uh, uh, based on the Microsoft security stack, sort of. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy for this, uh, this session. I, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I figured, I mean, if it's the first episode, you should start with a bang. They usually say, go out with a bang. I I start with a bang instead. So, I mean, you're, um, I didn't, you didn't mention it, but you're a Microsoft MVP. You've uh, held some talks at DEF CON, uh, at Sans Threat Summit, right? Um, probably more places that I don't even know of. Um, uh, so, I mean, yeah, that's uh, it's not a bad way to, to start off with, I reckon. Um, so, I can actually share the story about DEFCON. We can do that later on uh, if you have a, like a schedule to follow or some some agenda. I have no schedule. Uh, we just go with the flow. <laughs> and uh, by the way, before just let me add that um, I mean, for there are actually a couple of people watching. Um, so we, in a normal talk or conference or whatever, I mean, you have your talk and then at the end you get the audience to ask questions and then you ask answer questions. This is going to be because it's Twitch, right? And Twitch is interactive. So the idea is here that like, whenever you feel like it, ask questions, comment, whatever, and you know, we'll bring it up in, in, in the conversation. So um, don't wait until the end, uh, like a normal talk, just uh, throw away questions, not throw away, just ask them. Um, so yeah, DEF CON, that was your first real talk, right? So that was my, my, my absolute first public talk. Uh, talk and um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so it all started like I really want to go to DevCon. Um, I didn't know like anyone in the security community, and uh, it was, uh, I read about DevCon, saw some videos, and I oh I really want to be there. And uh, I thought, so, so how how am I gonna get there? Uh, so it was like uh, I don't think my uh, my company at the time was going to pay for it, and uh, so I decided, well, if I get the session there, I. Uh, I'll, I kind of gonna get there uh, uh, somehow, and uh, so I decided to to uh, to write a, a session. Never done that either, uh, so that was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was the first time um, uh, doing that. So um, I wrote this uh, session, but it was focused around the uh, you know the scam calls, and um, and um, uh, I sent it to the social engineering village and. Um, the um, um, I think it was like uh, midsummer eve. I got an email saying it was accepted, and I was like, uh, "All right, so what happens next?" And, and so on. So it, uh, I was actually, um, yeah. So it, it was accepted, and I was like, "Wow!" Um, and so, so, what's my next step to kind of, all right, now, now I need really need to develop this session somehow. And how, how do you even like do a session? Uh, everything was new, and um, um, uh, but I. Uh, Booked my my flights over to to Vegas, and uh, it was was my like second time in the U.S. Um, first time in Vegas, first time at DefCon alone. Um, but I, I think that was kind of a, a good thing because I had to interact with people. I had to, I mean, 
uh, networking and all those kind of um, stuff. And I met so many uh, interesting people there, um, which was amazing. And um, uh, but then, I mean, I was nervous the whole time for 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 my upcoming session, and I was like listening to all the sessions, and I was like, uh, wow, all right, so uh, these are really good people, and, and so on. But I, I give it a shot, and uh, uh, I didn't really know how much I had to prepare for it. So I didn't prepare much at all. And um, so I, th I think I had like 45 minutes, 50 minutes for my session. And um, uh, on stage, I mean, the stage fright was uh, just huge. And um, yeah, I think I was done in like 20 minutes or something. I didn't know what to do. I like, uh, all right, uh, questions. And uh, uh, and then it, then it was done. So, I mean, um, it was a terrible, I think it was, I mean, maybe some people got something from the session, but it was like non-technical. And the um, uh, something I learned uh, was that how much you need to prepare, how to, uh, I mean, getting better in uh, both speaking and uh, like uh, how do you uh, write your proper uh, PowerPoint slides and all those kind of things. And uh, uh, so I think it was, I mean, it was a very good lesson for, for myself. Um, like how much effort you really need to put into to the sessions, um, but but also one thing that I thought of because there was a lot of people from the community like um, telling me, all right, this was a good session and uh, gave, gave me some uh, some some good feedback and um, told me about the negative stuff and 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 so on, so I could actually take that uh, with me and learn and uh, develop myself and and, and and those kind of things. And um, I mean, it was a very fun experience, and uh, and I really encourage people to to start sharing with with the community. I mean, you don't obviously you don't need to do like the super cool stuff. Um, just sharing and and give something back to the community, and that's what I think is very important for me. Is I mean, you learn so many things from the community, so you actually need to give back to the community when you learn new stuff and and, and so on. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's sort of the idea of this show as well. It's sort of to share what we know and what we've experienced and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, that mindset has also taken you to, I mean, to becoming a Microsoft MVP, right? That's basically the whole core concept of it. Because I was going to ask, how do you actually become a Microsoft MVP? Are there like clear steps to follow and uh, like, yeah. It's, um, I mean, the there are no like, clear steps except for, I mean, uh, community stuff. Uh, it's all about the community. And I mean, the first thing to, to be become nominated, um, uh, it's a, an existing MVP that needs to uh, nominate you. And you also, or, or a full-time Microsoft employee can do that as well. And uh, so I was, uh, um, uh, when I became an MVP last summer, um, I was nominated by, uh, one of the defender teams in uh, in US, and uh, I mean, uh, when I got this nomination thing, um, I mean, it, it was very cool. I mean, get some recognition of all the, I mean, the hard, all the hard work and and so on. But it's um, uh, for myself, it was a lot of, I mean, my, my public sessions, of course, and and also uh, at the time, I, I think I pushed out a lot of blog posts. Uh, there was. A lot of new feature releases in uh, the Microsoft EDR product. Uh, so I blogged about all of them and uh, like how they can be used and, and so on. So I mean, that's uh, I think that's kind of uh, that was the, the the final thing for me uh, to get that out. And uh, also, I mean, how you behave in the community is one thing. Uh, I mean, uh, in the security community, I think that's very welcome. Um, I mean. Uh, of course, there are uh, some people that don't pay him. That, I mean, those people are everywhere. Uh, but in general, I think the secure, security community is one of the most like uh, encourage people, uh, encouraging community that actually pushes people to uh, to start sharing and, and so on. And I think that's, I mean, uh, for for me, it's uh, it's everything. I mean, I'm, I I learned so much from the community, and and keep learning. And I mean, uh, no one, uh, everyone will will keep on learning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, whenever, not whenever, but often when I use the Google stuff for, for Microsoft ATP or like Defender for Endpoints at this, at this 
they rebranded it now. I mean, I usually ended up at your site <laughs> for like uh, like KQL queries and tips and stuff about uh, like about Defender in in general. So I mean, that's uh, because you shared it, right? Uh, it's awesome. So you've you've been uh, that Defcon talk took you to some more places. You you've had a lot more talks since then, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I think one of the, the most fun talks are like the the communities, and uh, of course there have been some bigger events. Um, one thing that was, uh, I mean, the prestige for for myself was me and a friend Stefan uh, got accepted for a session at the Sun's uh, Threat Hunting and Incident Response Summit in London last year. Uh, it was in, in January. That was actually my last trip. I mean, you, you know, all this uh, COVID thing. And um, yeah, so that was, uh, I mean, it was totally different from the, a lot of the other events I've, I've been to. And uh, I think that was, uh, uh, it's actually <laughs> like the nervous thing and all those kind of things came back on stage and uh, it was actually good. Um, so uh, we actually did a session on, uh, uh, automate response with M365, um, like how can you utilize uh, Sentinel uh, 365 Defender and everything, how and build your automate response flow. Um, and of course, I mean, it's in sessions we did this like uh, this funny uh, demo stuff, like uh, post on Twitter, like instant response started, and then we did some uh, funny things, sent text messages in the flow, and uh, final finalized by uh, this user was. Uh, like, uh, mitigated and um, and uh, the response action uh, it took uh, in the flow everything on Twitter of course because um, <laughs> that's what you do yeah. also send uh, I mean the, the passwords and clear text in, in text messages and, and stuff I mean that, that was a fun way to show it um, that's uh, for me I, I think it's important on the sessions to not all like do uh, deep dive technical stuff and uh, but also uh, loosen that up a little bit with some humor and uh, make it something fun to watch. Because even if you're not that um, uh, deep technical in, in a thing, um, it's kind of uh, interesting to see the see the session anyways, some kind of that. So I, I think that's, uh, I mean, for me, it's uh, all about having fun. And uh, also, uh, I mean, I, I don't know the, like the number of sessions or anything like that, but uh, the first, like, it was, five, 10, 15 sessions, was like the stage fright. That was my biggest issue. Um, yep. And then after a while you get used to that. And uh, but then the other nervous thing happened where you kind of, you're so into delivering and you want to make a good impression. You want to, uh, I mean, you pray to the, to the demigods and uh, all those kind of things. <clears throat> and um, so then, the nervous is always there, and I think that's uh, that's very important because uh, I mean that's all about that you actually want to deliver something. I mean, if people uh, watching a session, I want it to be good to them, and I mean to um, get some takeaways or whatever from from the session, something that they can use at home or uh, in their profession and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so do you do you do you miss the stage right, or is it is it are you happy it's gone? <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't miss the straight stage fright as it is. Um, it was like, oh, I'm gonna faint. And uh, um, but uh, I mean, if if you just go up on stage and you don't care, I, I think that's uh, like a bad approach because uh, then you don't care about uh, what people think, and uh, I mean, you won't learn anything yourself and so on. I, I also actually try to learn something from all sessions, like um, uh, criticize myself, like. Uh, all right, so what can I do better the next time? Uh, what didn't work as well? And uh, uh, and also, I mean, uh, some offer for the demo gods if the demo worked and, and so on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, and I'm, sometimes I actually recorded them as, uh, yes, the, as a backup if uh, if something goes bad. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a like a good idea. So um, the topic for next time is what to what to offer the diff to demo gods. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. I want to know that. Um, I mean, you. So let's sort of uh, like dive into what we're actually doing on our daily jobs. Uh, and since you've been, you've held talks at uh, Sans Threat Hunting Summit, and we work with threat hunting. Um, like, what's and I don't know if there's a if there's a, an official 
definition of what threat hunting is. If there is, I sort of missed it. Like, what's your, what's your answer to the question? What is threat hunting? You know, um, uh, so, like a year ago when, when we talked, I uh, actually developed the uh, uh, the funder for endpoint training stuff, and uh, like for for analysts and, and, and so on. And uh, uh, I mean, one part was your idea, uh, and I love it. Uh, but one of the modules is like uh, advanced threat hunting. And it's like, all right, so how can we define it? And I agree with you. There, there, there are no, like, uh, not that I've seen, like, this is, this is threat hunting. The only thing that, uh, uh, that you have is like the maturity model for the threat hunting organization. Like you have the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember, it's like uh, level one uh, where you have the, all right, we can collect some data, we can search for known file ashes and, and stuff, and then you're evolved to the proactive thing where you kind of hunt for unknown threats uh, using anomalies and uh, and so on. But yeah, uh, maybe someone on, on the channel have a, like, uh, this is threat hunting, like uh, in one <laughs> one sentence. Yeah, or if someone has uh, some other idea what threat, threat hunting is. Like I, um, one thing I, I usually say is that threat hunting is also to like to find and catch stuff that has been evaded or not detected uh, from the AV or EDR. Um, and because like an EDR or AV catches bad stuff, right? It catches malware, it catches bad stuff. But when threat hunting, you also look at stuff that's not malicious. I mean, um, just normal normal binaries uh, that are on every Windows uh, host. Um, I mean, if someone from, uh, let's... Uh, just jump to conclusions, but if 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 uh, some seventy year old uh, from HR is running PowerShell, who am I? System Info, um, ARP. I mean, I mean those are not malicious stuff, and they would never be detected by uh, an AV or EDR. But that's what I look for when I threat hunt. Well, not only, but just. Um, it's, I mean, not only like known malicious stuff, but also uh, behavior that can be malicious um, and. Uh, uh, something I, uh, I mean the, uh, uh, I mean you you work with a lot of customers and and, and me too. And, uh, one thing is that you have the the difference between the organizations. So one thing that you hunt for in one organization might not fit in another organization. Yeah. So you always need to like yes, uh, 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 redo your your hunting. Sometimes you get some false positives and you need to change it, but it works in another organization. And that's. Um, Kind of when you uh, push the the hunting queries to to get the small nitty gritty stuff and uh, yeah uh, and sometimes you get some you just get false positives nothing <laughs> to do about it there's a lot of false positives so we got some it worked in, like, it worked in four months and then like oh you, now we got a false positive <laughs> yep <laughs> so we got some feedback from chat so payload says finding the unknown which I think is a is a good uh, like description of threat hunting and uh, Stark Friedrich is also watching in. Uh, so looking for anomalies uh, is the skill, in his opinion, and I I agree. I mean something that just doesn't really fit in uh, with the other stuff. Um, I think like that Ghostbusters. <laughs> sort of, yeah. I mean, I mean that's the hard part. I mean, it's it's you can always Google for queries. You can always always Google for stuff to to just copy and paste in, but then understand it and find that little that one line that makes all the difference. It's uh, that's that's hard. I mean that takes experience, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm in love with threat hunting. That's uh, I, uh, and uh, I mean we we got so great uh, great tools uh, now that you can use for threat hunting. I mean, using data that you didn't see years ago. Uh, I mean, uh, especially when we look at the at the endpoints. I mean, previously some you could forward. It. Well, of course you could use Sysmon and stuff. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's more event based. Uh, but this is more things happening in the operating system, which gives another a totally different insight to the to the endpoints that what's being executed, how it's being executed, and uh, also do like um, searches back in time to see was this normal behavior before? Is it a change in, in behavior? And um, yeah, it's so many things that you, you can do with it. And uh, uh, you can see so much interesting data and, and learn so much uh, from it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, Astron85 from chat says, I use it to get a clear image about an ongoing or previous impact and also random checks. Uh, yeah, absolutely agree. 
like ongoing ongoing stuff, ongoing at- attacks and everything, then then threat hunting is it's a really good way to go. Um, it's kind of uh, addictive. Uh, I also think, I mean, if you talk about uh, the Marxo product, to, um, uh, both from, from Azure Sentinel, but also from the Funder for Endpoint. Uh, should we do like uh, the name change thing? Yeah, um, yeah, please do, because I I say the wrong the, name like, um, every day still. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too. Sometimes I actually refer with the, to the old names. Um, yeah. Uh, because the security community started to, I mean, especially uh, the people not working with Microsoft as a, like a uh, primary uh, primary vendor, um, uh, started to learn like you have the ATPs, you have the Office ATP, uh, Azure ATP, uh, which is the old advanced threat analytics, um, and you have the Defender ATP for for the endpoints. And on Ignite last year, uh, there was a change. I've also had Microsoft Threat Protection, uh, which was kind of like a combined thing uh, with the central portal. Uh, but uh, they changed the name to uh, uh, to Defender. So everything is Defender now. So you have uh, Defender for Identity, which was the old Azure ATP. You have the Defender for Office 365, which is kind of obvious it's, it's Office 365. Uh, but Defender for Endpoint, which is the, uh, the Endpoint part. Um, uh, so got some new acronyms like MDI, MDE, um, MDO. <laughs> yeah, and I st- I'll still throw out ATP like every now and then, and then I'm like, no, it's it's DFE now, so Defender for Endpoints. Um, I still yeah. do it. Uh, I'm getting better at it, but it's, yeah, it still slips. Same thing. I mean, sometimes when we talk to customers, I actually refer to the old names so we avoid confusion. Um, uh, I was actually on a uh, on a customer call like right after uh, Ignite and. Uh, so it was, um, I mean, everyone just mixed up the names. So it was like, so, so which product are, are we talking about now? And uh, yeah, so it was, yeah, it was fun. But uh, we decided, all right, let's talk, let's use the old names uh, to avoid confusion. Yeah. Um, but the, um, I mean, from a threat hunting perspective, in in this cap- with these capabil- capabilities, we can, uh, I mean, we get the data so easily. Uh, so, I mean, just onboard the endpoints so we can start hunt for the data and, um, I mean the details of the data, and uh, it's and the amount of data is is crazy amount of data, and um, and also we also have the uh, the uh, I mean the community queries uh, being developed, and we have the like the community GitHub um, for people to and I encourage people and let's shout it out now and like share your queries. Um, the more people that share the queries, the more people would start share the queries, and we will get. Um, uh, we can use the queries to detect the malicious stuff, and everyone is here to to pr- protect the companies. Yeah, and uh, like I'm sort of used to like if 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 the product owner supplies like open source queries stuff, it's I'm not used to it being good. But this GitHub GitHub repo that's available with with uh, all these queries you mentioned, it's actually really good. Like there's some really good stuff in there. Uh, maybe it won't fit exactly into your organization, but then you just tweak it a little bit. And um, I mean, that's that's really good. You can also use it to get some ideas. I mean, if you work with other like uh, systems that support a query language, uh, it's kind of easy to uh, to start working with custom. And um, <clears throat> um, and you, I in the beginning, I used those uh, community developed queries to to learn the language and. Uh, actually learn how to, I mean, to develop my own hunting queries. And uh, I mean, you still learn and, uh, new ways of uh, doing your custom detections and stuff. Um, so how do you do when you do the, like the threat hunting? I, like I have one thing which I think is important. You use two tabs in the, in the browser. Uh, so you can jump between different queries, uh, like the queries you did before and so on. And uh, so you have the query where you, you develop your new, th- uh, your new query and you have the, the other browser tab that you look for, like uh, how you did the last query, like this uh, join thing you did uh, that worked very well and you need to redo it and you just want to copy the code and so on. I should maybe start doing that. I just use one tab. Uh, I'm old school. <laughs> so I do one tab and then just rerun the search. Uh, but yeah, it, two tabs sounds faster. So I should probably pick that up. I mean, <laughs> since you can't like uh, open two queries, uh, I mean, you can have two queries in the same window, 
but if you want to look in your like previous detection that you did like a month ago and you want to open that specific query, uh, you need to leave your current window. So that's why you use uh, two, two different tabs. It's, um, so I can, I mean, if I see that's failing, just open a new tab, look at your previous question or, uh, and, or look at the, um, uh, the community developers and uh, copy some things if you need to. I mean, uh, there's, there's always someone that's like solved your issue, uh, prior to you. So, uh, I mean, use, use Google, use the community queries, use whatever, just solve the, uh, solve the challenge. I agree. I actually, there's some questions that uh, it's probably to you because I think you're better at them than I am in chat. Mm -hmm. uh, so Stark Felix says, for the uni for, for the Nix people, is the of endpoints the, op the best option? Like, does it work well in, in Nix systems? Do you have, do you have any... Yeah, yeah it's, um, I mean, I, I tried a public preview um, and, uh, I mean, it's... Uh, um, I don't know Nix that well that I can answer if it's better than another tool. Um, but they, I mean, you get the data and um, I, I think, I mean, if, if you think it's uh, good enough, I, I think it's up to everyone to, uh, I mean, do the proper eval, test it out, compare it and, and so on. But uh, for me, uh, for myself and, uh, and so on, I think it's, I mean, it started good and uh, of course the, uh, the the feature and so on will um, uh, be developed and and uh, uh, we will get more features and stuff uh, over the, the years coming and so on. Yeah, because I mean, it, it's happened so much with uh, um, with Microsoft products the last like year or two. I mean, going back two or three years, I mean, uh, ATP or DFE wasn't really the best on the market in my opinion. So, but it's it's it, it's really evolved, and I mean we're talking mainly about Microsoft because you're heavy into Microsoft, so that's uh, yeah. uh, but like I work with the Carbon Black and CrowdStrike and Microsoft DFE, um, so I usually I, I get to see all of them, um, and uh, each I mean each product is better in their own area probably, like I the 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 live response in ATP in DFE see I said ATP. Uh, the live response in, in uh, DFE is way too slow. Uh, it lacks options. It's way too slow. So there are other products that are better in that aspect. And then, you know, vice versa. But yeah. Um, what else do we have? Yeah. Ponte I mean, I, uh, Yeah. yeah so I, I just Go think ahead. that, I mean, um, uh, I, I think it depends on where the product comes from as well. I mean, uh, if they focus on some features when uh, they were developed and then started to move on with the different features and, and so on. And also, uh, I mean, uh, Carbon Black had been on the market for, for a very long time uh, today. And, and, uh, but uh, the, the thing that marks up, I mean, the speed and uh, how fast they develop new, uh, new features. And also one thing that I think is important is that you have the little smiley in the portal. Um, use that to send feedback because they're, I mean, they're all listening to feedback and they want to hear from people working with the products, uh, things that doesn't work or things that actually work very well and, and so on. So that's how we can affect the product, um, uh, like in the upcoming versions and so on. So I've never used that feature. I probably should start doing that then. I just figured it's something that no one really li looks at and listens to. <laughs> no, into the void. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, it's it's not worth the click because no one's gonna li look at it anyway. But yeah, I'll I'll um I'll start doing that. Yeah, you get the the, the screenshot, um, and and sometimes well, the, the screenshot is not. Uh, I mean, you you get the screenshot and you can select if you want to include it. But um, and sometimes you would like to have another screenshot, but yes. We write some things and uh, and also, of course, add your email where you want uh, Microsoft to get back to you uh, yeah. if they have questions and so on. I mean, uh, uh, in the beginning of Threat Only, we didn't have the, uh, um, well, uh, initially, uh, I don't, I can't remember, uh, I don't think we had like the Threat Hunting uh, capabilities at all. So the, the only hunting you could do was like the search window we have in, on, on the top side uh, or on the top of the site. Uh, what I can remember, so I might be wrong there. Um, um, but uh, uh, we didn't have like the uh, the graph thing, so we couldn't render uh, different charts and so on. Uh, so that was, I think, that was added in uh, 
like early 2020 some somewhere around that and uh, that was after uh, myself and other people um, uh, asking for that feature and repeatedly asking for it because we really wanted it awesome um we got a question directly to you uh and if you want to answer it do it if you don't want to that's fine um because you do you do incidents as well and i just came out of an incident at work so question to you from stuart friedrich do you have any redacted war stories to share yeah if you don't have it's completely fine so yeah re- re- redacting on the fly is hard <laughs> yeah uh, yeah absolutely and uh, frederick i'll definitely share it with you as soon as i can up, uh, come up with something uh but i'm actually you know, before like i started working full-time with security i did a lot of like client things um i actually did a like a mistake on, on the deployment uh, which didn't end up that well uh but i I actually heard an even worse story there where, some, where someone actually deployed like an operating system to all systems, um, which was kind of bad because like all systems like, uh, rebooted, started to install a new operating system. Uh, I haven't done that, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if I come up with something, we can maybe get back to that question. Absolutely. Or like, I hope you're going to be on more time. So uh, eventually for another yeah. episode, but if you come up with something, please share. Uh, we can do something uh, after Ignite. I mean, uh, I mean, Ignite coming up uh, next month, and um, I mean, there will be so many new features released uh, and announced. Um, so maybe we can do like a yeah. recap with all the new things. That's gonna be interesting. Um, I was gonna say, yeah. So Pontus Kalander in chat said, just said Microsoft and names, like, yeah. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, I agree that. Uh, but initially, the name ATP really confused me with APT, um, and it's like it has to be even harder for people who doesn't really work in security full time. So did you say a- ATP? A- APT? Do you have an APT? No, no, you have ATP. Like you can relax. It's it's okay. Yeah, you're like whoa, do you have a network? Uh, <laughs> yeah, need to call someone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, um, once threat protection was persistent threat. yeah that's uh i mean that crew's name is, uh, is very close and uh nothing about the portals no questions about the portals um what do you maybe about portals yeah yeah it's, it's a few of them uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, there's a lot of them <laughs> and we won't even touch licensing because that's like that's like a week long no, I, ne- topic. I never do so i mean I- when you talk with the customers uh, sometimes i mean uh, of course you have I mean, you, you know the license models for the things that you do, but sometimes I, I get like nope. questions about how can we license, like we want to have teams and we want to have uh, Defender and we want to have this and this and that. And like, uh, yeah, uh, contact uh, uh, Microsoft because uh, uh, that will be a correct, correct answer. <laughs> um, but it actually did a license change in the uh, uh, on, on Defender because first time you have, um, uh, it was only the E5, uh, and then you got the, like the E5 security thing, uh, and uh, and you also have the like the standalone defender, uh, defender for endpoint license. Uh, that you can license per server, so that's. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a hellhole to be honest. The licensing parts. Yeah, the, yeah. Have you seen the license slide on, on GitHub? Mm, no, it I... is actually a license slide there. As, as, as soon yeah, as someone talks something. licenses, I'm just yeah. You need to talk to this person at my company, so I'm not gonna. I don't even go there. I just I just pass that one to 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 someone who knows it's better than than I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's I mean you need to kind of uh, be into licensing, I guess. Um, like we are in into like the technical stuff, and some people are into licenses. Yeah, true. I mean, people like all weird stuff, so some people like licenses. I, I, yeah, I should right, be ni- so, I, sh- I should be nice. I know. Um, how, have you handled uh, the, the the pandemic thing? And uh, I mean, DefCon was cancelled last year. Yeah, as of- always, <laughs> it always is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everything is cancelled. So my company, TrueSec, we work from home. Uh, everything apart from the the security operation center, which which has to be on site. Um, other other than that, like if you can work from home, then work from home. Uh, and as far as like conferences and stuff, I, I've never spoken at any conference or had any talk or webinar or anything. So I can't say it's affected me that way, 
but it has to have affected you. you. <laughs> my challenge for you. You need to send the send the talk. Um, the um, yeah, it's uh, sorry for interrupting, but I mean it's the same thing. Uh, uh, I think I went home. Uh, was actually working in an incident, and I started to handle that incident from home. Um, and I think that was on March second last year. Um, so it's almost a year now. And I really start to climb on the walls. I mean, uh, I, I love meeting people. And uh, uh, actually, yeah, I have a flight, a, a story of uh, when I flew home from, from Vegas. And uh, and I, I mean, it's commonly known that I don't like flying. Uh, but actually, I really want to like take a trip somewhere. It's, um, uh, I mean, I love being at home, spending more time with my family. Um, so you don't like come home eat, uh, go to the office, uh, I mean, in, in the basement. And, uh, yeah, no, and then go that's, to that's called incident life. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you go, to, I mean, or, and uh, the, um, uh, now you actually get more time with the family since you are at home. Um, so, uh, I mean, for that, from that perspective, it's, it's really good. Uh, I mean, we both have small kids. And uh, the, um, but I, I really miss that. I, I mean, uh, we were meeting up, the, I mean, the company uh, a lot of, uh, very often uh, before the pandemic. And uh, I, I miss my colleagues. I really want to meet them. Of course, I mean, in, in our, I mean, our sort of the same thing. They need to work from, from office. And uh, um, but I kind of miss meeting everyone. Yeah, same here. I um, actually went in this week to say hello to to my colleagues and uh, some new some new um, stars that we just hired, so I had to say hi to them. Uh, um, so we got a question because, like, as a, as an MVP, and this is two part question. As an MVP, you get more insight into Microsoft's uh, like plans, right? Uh, and secondly, because it connects to this, so like, there's a question from Silica, I suppose you had to how you pronounce it. For what makes Microsoft so good at implementing new features at like Lightning Quick? I think um, uh, one is how they work. I mean, uh, um, oh, I can't remember the name now. Uh, I mean, you, it's not the, like the waterfall things, uh, quick deployments, uh, like uh, deploying features and stuff. Uh, so that uh, I think that is one of the reasons why, why they uh, kind of or able to deploy such feature. And also, I mean, the cloud thing, um, that's, I mean, the, um, I usually compare that when I talk to customers that are like heavily on with on-prem stuff and uh, like of um, new to all the cloud thing. And um, so they're gonna release a new version of like some security tool and they have need to have this huge implementation projects and upgrade projects. Uh, but now we just get a new tick box in, in the cloud service that we can enable. Um, of course, sometimes it needs a new agent on, on, on the machine, but since it's built in and uh, we don't really need to manage that. Um, but the, um, uh, or it, it's included in the operating system. And um, so Microsoft is able to, to release new features in the service uh, without affecting the endpoints to that extent. And um, I mean, uh, one perfect example is the uh, is Azure Sentinel. I mean, deploying a SIEM system with just a few clicks. And um, I mean, you can actually deploy it with code. And if you compare with with uh, like, uh, more like, legacy systems or whatever, um, uh, it's the bigger implementation products and you need to like, uh, acquire the, the hardware you need, to, like plan the, the scaling and everything. Uh, so I think that is a huge shift that's uh, coming more and more for security tools, and we see more uh, security tools being offered as a cloud service. So I think that's that's uh, like the new shift. And um, well, it's, it's not started today; it started some time ago. But uh, I think more and more people started to encourage uh, cloud services, and I, I think that's. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's much easier for for us to to uh, deploy it, and also easier for us as the service that our companies provide to. Uh, to access the, the customer data and, and uh, work with the customer uh, the customer tools. Awesome. And yeah, but and, and also as an MFE, I mean, we work uh, pretty close with the product teams, but that also, 
I mean, it's it's very. Uh, I mean, it's up to yourself to to keep that contact, and uh, I mean, uh, to give your time to actually test things, do like do the preview stuff, and uh, also provide feedback. And uh, I think the reason why we see the uh, I mean, it's a very long answer to just two very specific questions, but um, perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I mean, I, I'm meeting people now. <laughs> it's awesome. Finally, uh, the, <laughs> yeah. We should do this more often. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the um, uh, I think I mean uh, why Microsoft is because I noticed that the features coming out is uh, a lot of features that that I've been asking for and that I know other people have been asking for and they actually listen to feedback and prioritize the feedback. You have the, like the, the user voice channels that you can uh, uh, vote for different features and so on. And uh, I mean they have a great interact uh, interaction with the, with the um, with the communities and um, encourage people to send feedback and I think that is very important as a vendor to to listen to the people that actually work with the tools uh, so uh, yeah well, I think that, I mean the strategy is uh, I think that's a good strategy so are there and my question from Sulika, is there any feature that you, and maybe you can't really answer this, uh, I realize, but is there any feature that you're waiting to get implemented? <laughs> there are always features waiting for be, to be announced. It's, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I mean, uh, the feature being announced, uh, like, I mean, always new features coming up, and um, and also we, we see some things being enabled before they're being announced and, and so on. And, uh, uh, there are new things coming all the time, so it's. Uh, but actually, it's, it's kind of hard to to uh, keep track of. All right, is this uh, feature uh, is a public preview? Is it private preview? Is this uh, my preview or whatever it is? So it, that's kind of um, very hard, very hard for me because I I really don't want to break the NDA and, and stuff. <laughs> and uh, and it's um, yeah, that, that, that's a huge challenge for me, especially since I'm kind of uh, I'm everywhere sometimes I'm like oh I need to do this I, I want to try this and, and so so it's uh, <laughs> yeah that, that's a huge challenge for, for myself at least <laughs> uh, good. That's, that's I mean there's some good questions coming up um, Stuart Friedrich uh, is really interested in, in, in the MVP stuff and asked how hard was it to get your first nomination and what would be your recommendation for anyone that wants to become an MVP and like, do do you aim to become an MVP, or does it just happen? Uh, uh, for myself, it's it kind of happened. I mean, uh, uh, I know uh, a lot of people that have been MVPs for like 10, 12 years. I think it's one listening that have been there for like I think it's like thirteen years. I think it's it's uh, a long time. In two, yeah, in in two, I think it's MVP now in two areas. It's it's just crazy. Um, nice. But for me, it it wasn't about becoming an MVP. It was like um it wasn't like a final goal or anything uh it was just working hard having fun uh and uh, then i started to get involved in different kind of uh, like projects and uh, i mean working for a partner of course make things easier uh because you i mean get the contact routes and, and so on um <clears throat> but then um uh, the uh, the woman at microsoft nominated me it was like after we had a uh better a trip in Stockholm. She was here from from Redmond, and uh, I was showing her Stockholm, um, uh, showing her a Swedish fika and the, and the princess cake. And uh, after that, uh, I mean, she she wanted to, I mean, be able to work uh, with me more frequently and so on. And um, uh, she, she mentioned that oh, um, I can actually nominate you as an MVP and so on. And um, um, yeah, no, of course, I was very happy for that, but uh, and I didn't thought it was gonna come through because I I know what my my friends who are MVPs how much work they are doing and so I was like oh shit, and um, they um, uh, and when I got like the uh, the email saying uh, congratulations on the July first, I was like uh, starting by reading the email header. Uh, <laughs> like, so who who was spoofing this? And, like, <laughs> yeah, it's from Microsoft. Can it be from Office three six five? And um, like start, and I was into this uh, in the middle of a workshop, and so it's uh, it took a few days before I realized it. And uh, to be honest, I mean I'm involved in a lot more like, uh, 
different calls from Microsoft now, uh, of course. But um, <clears throat> but from another perspective, it doesn't like uh, uh, I'm not into the like the the superstar thing, um, and that's not like the important stuff for me. Uh, it's more about like the networking, and that's um, I think that's uh, is fun, but. Obviously, wrong year to to become MVP because <laughs> everything is uh, is cancelled. So, um, yes, and so my next goal is, of course, to to uh, be re-nominated or re uh, re something. So I'm will be that next year. So that's my goal for uh, for the year to, this year. It was my goal to be uh, re-nominated, of course. And uh, um, but yeah. It, I mean, of course, it's fun, and you get some recognition, of course. But um, it's, um, um, I think, it's more about uh, the, uh, I mean, the networking and stuff. And uh, I think it's important to uh, to still uh, be yourself. And well, that's, that sounds like a, like a typical thing to say, but uh, uh, that's important for me at least. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who are pretending to be someone they're not, or pretending to be better than they're not. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd hap- I happily ask a lot of questions a lot of like there aren't stupid questions but i ask a lot of stupid questions because like how else am i supposed to learn uh so i i love asking and i mean if 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 the person on the other end can't explain then they didn't know the stuff to begin with so then it wasn't a stupid question um yeah yeah so that's yeah um Uh, uh, that's a that's a very common thing i mean uh i don't if you compare, uh, you know, level one, two, and three in uh, uh, in the security operations and stuff, and also the same thing with like help desk and second line and so on. Um, some people think that they become someone when they go to a different level or what you should, should call it. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's like, well, you, you were there like yesterday. Um, uh, but it's like I'm not doing that because I'm not in, on that level, and that's I think that's the time when you stop learning stuff. And uh, I mean, if I don't want to learn new things, I should leave the business. Yeah. Because um, especially in this you business, think like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the things we know that's yesterday is not worth knowing uh, tomorrow. So it's uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's one of the business in IT that's most quickest uh, and. and so many, I mean, there are new attack vectors, uh, there are new new attacks, and uh, uh, some attacks are not happening, but you still need to keep track of them. And there, there's so many things happening in security. And uh, I think that's the fun thing, because otherwise I would get bored if it's the same thing uh, over and over again. But um, I still think that, um, I mean, it's one of the jobs within IT that that moves uh, a lot faster than uh, maybe a few others. I agree. And I but agree. maybe I, I just love it, in love with my own things, but uh... no. Oh well, uh, I think it's it goes for for both of us. But I mean, I mean, speaking of level, like different levels in different fields of of like work, um, I think we should touch on like how you got into security, how I got into security, and like yeah. if we have any any. Let's call it best practices. Let's do some buzzwords. And like, do we have anything to share oh, about how to? I, I know I was dropping them left and right. <laughs> so like, how? Well, I can start. You can. You can. Uh, you can. Uh, you've you talked. You've talked for a while. So, uh, like, I I've been working in IT for twenty ish years, um, mainly in like telecom business. So like senior engineer in in, in telecom for Nokia and, and Ericsson and stuff. And then, like, finally, I sort of felt like I didn't really do anything that had any impact. Like, I wanted to make more of a contribution to society or something. It sounds, it sounds a big, but like that's basically how I felt. Um, I'm like, I'm, the things I'm doing every day, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter to anyone. And I wanted to actually have an impact, so I sat around and figured, you know, what should I do? Uh, and then I. S- decided to, I want to do penetration testing. So I'm going to be a pen tester. Um, and that's a big step from being a telecom network engineer, basically, to a pen tester. Uh, but I, I mean, I've, I've always been done security stuff, uh, just not full time. So then I spent an entire summer, um, just went, I think I woke up at like 6 a.m. every morning during my during my vaca- like summer holidays. 
and spent like a couple of months, like three, four or five months just studying everything. Um, and then when I f- sort of felt that I had uh, the skill set at least to be a junior pen tester, I applied for a job at, at Corsic, uh, who is now Orange. And I spoke to um, to a guy there called Yuan, and he said, "Oh, you know, come, let's let's bring you in, have a chat, and see what is, you know, let's 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 have a feel." Uh, and then, like we had a talk, like an interview, and he said, "He's well." He basically said that it's going to be hard to sell you as a consultant because you have no, I mean, I like you as a person, but you have no certification, you have no experience, um, like it's a hard sell, basically. Um, so I didn't get it. I didn't get that job. But instead of just being negative, uh, I actually I went. I got constructive. I'm like, well, he's correct. I mean, if I was in his position, that's what I would say. So I went home. I booked some exams for like entry level certs, like CompTIA Security Plus. So I paid for it for myself. I wrote that exam. I paid for OECP. Uh, and started doing that, got like halfway through in a couple of days. And then I phoned him up again the week after and said, hey, so I got that certification that you were mentioning and I'm doing OSCP. So, you know, yeah, let's talk again. And we did and I got the job. So, uh, and then just spiraled from there and to where I am now. That was like six or seven years ago. Uh, so that was my way in. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, I like the way where you kind of... Uh, both, I mean, you, you invested your your own money, and and uh, uh, I mean, some people get it from their companies. Like, I want to take this training. It's like, all right, go to this training. But some, I mean, that doesn't work everywhere. And I mean, I, I like the thing where you actually spend your own. I mean, spend your own time, and so I mean, that's why expect kind of. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, people think, oh, well, you're an IT, you're kind of broken, <laughs> but um. Uh, kind of like going up and, and studying or see, I mean, midnight and stuff, but yeah. um, that you actually invest your own money and, and, and such. I mean, that's just amazing. And um, I mean, but that's, I mean, if you're really, really dedicated that you really want something, I mean, that's the way to go. I mean, some people spend the money at the bars and we just spend our money different. Exactly. And, and like, <clears throat> yeah, and I, I, I didn't get that job because of my skill set I got it because I had a really like a desire to learn a desire to really like this is what I want to do I took a huge uh, like a salary decrease I went down in salary like a lot but that's fine because I want this job like this is, this is what I want to do and that's why I got the job so that's like something I would really want to pass on and like if you if you apply for a job and you don't get it like, don't get discouraged sort of reverse engineer that that uh, experience that and like, what can I do better next time? And what were they really asking for? Uh, and just you know, go from there. Yeah, so. and, um, and it's, uh, uh, by the way, how, how did it go with, with OCP? Is it, uh, are you completed there or is it still ongoing? And- no, I was like halfway through and then I got that job and uh, there was no time to continue with it. So I had to... I love the time thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, actually, uh, I got it uh, as a present from, from a very dear friend uh, last year, like with 90 lab days. Mm, yeah. And I was like, yay, let's start. And uh, then we got like a huge incident after the first week. And I saw my lab days like flying away and... Um, and then, um, uh, so the training for OSP is upgraded, and uh, so you get the new, uh, I think it's like powers and stuff being added. So I actually uh, bought the, the upgrade, and like, oh, yeah, after the summer, I gotta have some time, and then it's <laughs> another incident, and then you're stuck again. Uh, but I have it as, as a goal to year, uh, this year at least. Um, but the, um, uh, when I started, uh, I mean, uh, taking the same route as a lot of people, I mean, starting in doing health desk and support um, and uh, I mean started to push it and like wanted to learn and uh, started to do labbing at home and so on to become better and uh, then I moved to uh, the, like a different group and so on and then I started with like uh, infrastructure and, and stuff and uh, I can't remember I mean I spent some years in, in support I love the I love the uh, communication with the end users. Uh, I mean, be the like the hero of the day, helping them with all kinds of, of, of problems. I also got to like the fun stories at least. Um, 
Uh, but from then, I mean, I've always had a, like this security interest. Um, I mean, since school, I mean, uh, everyone's seen the like the hackers movie uh, with Angelina Jolie, and uh, I mean that 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 was really cool at the time. It's kind of fun to watch now, but it, uh, it was cool at the time. Um, and um, but really, I didn't really know how to get there and, and, and stuff. And uh, then I started to like think of more security. I mean, learn stuff before like new implementations or like changes and stuff or so what's the security impact of this change and you started to learn and like change your mindset to uh, uh, think more on the security and I mean the impact they could have and, and so on and then took some trainings I also uh, got this like interview when I didn't get to the, uh, get the job and um, I mean instead of just going home and like give, giving up it's just I mean work harder um, I mean Always, you always had the chance to like talk to the company that uh, uh, didn't give you the, the job and like ask them uh, honestly what what you need to work on and, and so on. So that's uh, I think that's uh, I mean that's the way forward. Um, and you won't have this like clear trip like I start with this and after a year I go go here and after one year I get a million in salary and and those kind of things. I mean it doesn't work. It's uh, you really need to work hard and. And when you get some uh, some negative stuff, learn from that and move on. Don't like dig deeper into that. Just uh, move on and uh, and continue. And then I I, I can't remember my full, like my first full time security job, and I learned so much from my colleagues. I mean, it was a, a good team working in and, and so on. And then after some time, I really want to focus on some specific things, and then I looked for that kind of job. So it's. Um, but I think the IT business is crazy now. I, I, I really don't know how, how it is in other countries. Um, but from here, it's like uh, you call people you want to hire. Maybe not only for the technical skills, the technical skills, but, but as you mentioned, like this is a, I mean, a good person. They can learn whatever they need to learn, and you kind of want to build like the people, people-based team first, and then you build the technology stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think the chat is agreeing with us. Pontus Holande says, love the mentality and never stop learning. Like that's, yeah, yeah, I think that's the default setting you need to have. So I, I just, I actually, I haven't thought about this in years, but there's a, like way back in my mid-twenties, I think, I was applying for a job. I don't actually remember what it was. Um, and then during the interview, you know, there's a point where they say, so, like, why do you want to work for X company? And my mind just blanked out. And I went quiet for like 10 seconds, which felt like a lifetime. And then I was like, it, it's pretty close to home. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah, I love that. yeah. like, is there any other reason? Like, they want to help me. Like, is there any other reason? I'm like, no, it's, yeah, I can just walk, you know. <laughs> and like, yeah, I didn't get it. So, yeah, uh, don't do that. That's also a best practice. Don't say that in interviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually heard a lot of... Uh... Uh, a friend uh, used the same the same phrase and it didn't work at, at that time either. So it's really yeah, I love that. It's um... I I tried it. You don't have to just just don't. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I know Stark as as the uh, back uh, a while ago in chat uh, where you're from. If you want to share that and Swedish Fika, so obviously from Sweden. From. Yeah, where yeah, you from? Yeah, uh, Stockholm. Uh, Southern Stockholm, Huddinge. Uh, uh, countryside actually, so it's uh, it, it's uh, out in, in the woods. Um, I have some neighbors, apparently, um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I have this uh, small uh, cabin here with uh, with a basement, so I have some some place to go to. Um, it's perfect. Yeah, it's uh, I love it out here. I mean, it's calm and uh, especially. I mean, it takes some time to go into the city, not that long. But if you're gonna do it with uh, like trains and stuff, it's like uh, over an hour uh one-way trip uh but with car if it's no traffic it's like um uh, 15 20 minutes uh that's not, it's, uh, not too bad yeah no no not at all so it's um yeah i like it here so you and i met for the first time and don't actually know when that was like 2016 ish maybe 15 15 yeah you have better memory than i do 
uh, during the certified ethical hacker uh, yeah. course, basically. Yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah, yeah. W- way back. <laughs> Not way back, but way back. a while ago, yeah. Um, Can you remember? I mean, I have this, like, the uh, exam uh, thing. Uh, I mean, I've always had it. Uh, um, I don't like exams. Um, simple as that. I was nervous as hell uh, on the last day when we were taking the exam. And, that was uh, a crappy exam. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 course. sure. Uh, yeah, well, I kind of, I mean, I, I like the course because it, it's very broad, and uh, I mean, there are no like deep dives into anything. Um, but kind of like, I mean, it's a good view into security, um, uh, and from that perspective, I, I think it's, I mean, it's good for that perspective to get the like an understanding the of course it depends on where you come from and what you've done pre, prior to that mm. uh, for some people it's just uh i mean it's a it's a checkbox um but uh, actually i mean uh, if you go to training and you learn something it it's good uh, and then of course it depends on what you do with your new skills and and so on after that yeah uh, but i actually I, I like the class we had i mean it was a lot of uh Fun people, fun people to meet. A lot of and, characters, uh, a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, they say the same thing about you and you and I. So it's, <laughs> yeah, like those two weirdos, man. Just yeah. what the fuck were you doing there? Um, so I like, I sort of want to touch on a sensitive subject here, which uh, people don't really agree with me. But I mean, a lot of people on Twitter and also in like job ads sort of uh, really look down on, on CH, like the certif- Certified Ethical Hacker uh, cert. Um, and I'm thinking like to get into the subject of like gatekeeping and stuff. Because it feels, I, I saw one job ad here in Sweden, I'm not going to name the company. It basically said, I'm not paraphrasing here, something like, um, so like s- certifications are not like necessary if you have CH, it might actually hinder you like okay so i'm not gonna work for you then um if if you're sort of uh, uh on an elite level and look down on people with ch um so yeah I, mean, I think that certain certs has certain values at certain times in a career um absolutely absolutely i, so, I agree with that but uh, i think i mean especially that phrasing i, I think that's weird because uh, i mean uh, if you got that and uh, i mean you have sheep you have achieved something you did some studying and you did an exam uh, i mean the exam thing for me is like uh, a lot of like exams um but in um, um but in, in in general i think i mean you should never look down on anyone who has like uh, uh, taken a challenge and and succeeded with it uh, i think i mean if, i would say the same thing as you someone like Oh, you got this, then we're not going to hire you. I mean, the, a certificate is not who you are and it's not your knowledge uh, either. It's just something you did uh, previously and something you succeeded with. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know uh, uh, <clears throat> a vendor company with, with uh, there's one department where all of them uh, uh, like had on their, uh, uh, their uh, the plan that they uh, were supposed to take CH and that was to get the overview and and so on for uh, for security and uh, uh, that so that's part of security uh, i mean i think that's a good starting point into of offensive security to some extent at least and um, yeah uh, i mean it's a certificate and uh, i mean there are other trainings that are better and uh, there are some that are worse so it's um, yeah and a um so like yeah there's, there's different ways to go from here but basically the reason i think i'm gonna keep it in my name on linkedin <laughs> yeah please do <laughs> i mean dude i'm gonna add it just because yeah and yeah, uh, everyone everyone with ch add it on your linkedin absolutely no so like there's, there's different reasons for getting a certain certificate so one reason if you're unemployed or wanted to get into security and you take ch i mean just having that cert can take you past hr i mean even if even if that security team doesn't value CH very high or not, I mean, I don't know, but it might get you past HR because that's a requirement they have. Um, that might be one reason. Another reason might be you're a consultant and 
your clients, their recommendations, because they don't know security, that's why they hire you, their requirements is, oh, he needs to have a, a, a he or she needs to have like security plus and a certified ethical hacker. So like, okay, I'll take the cert. It's just not a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, I just, it's, so there's different reasons to that, I think. Um, I mean, a lot of people just uh, want it for the name. Uh, I mean, that's obvious. Um, yeah. But also, I still think it. I mean, the uh, I mean, the different domains it goes through, and uh, uh, to get like the basic basic understanding and some practical. I mean, depending on how. I mean, if you just uh, do the books and uh, not practice at all, is studying for the exam. That's one thing. That that's the thing that I like with the OSP. That it's uh, like a hands-on exam. Um, but, but again, I mean, if you have time for the OSP, you obviously spend too much time learning, maybe, <laughs> and not to work that much. So, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Yawning Yuri in the chat said, Why is CH controversial like that? Uh, I know nothing about it. It's basically, like, in my per very personal opinion, it's gatekeeping people, like, look down on a certain cert because it's a beginner cert and I'm better than that. So, that's why I look down on, uh, like, uh, certs that might be sort of on an entry level but I mean it's an entry level it's uh, and that was the second road I was going to go down like it's not like you you choose between I'm going to become a Microsoft MVP or CEH or I'm going to be I'm going to do the like what's the what's the high-end Cisco stuff like CCIE right like you don't choose between a high-end cert and an entry level cert you choose between two entry level certs and you pick one of those and one of those might be Security Plus or Certified Ethical Hacker. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the CH. Uh, do, does it still require you to take the like the official trainings as well? Because I mean, if it's that oh, expensive, it, uh, and the certificate or the exam is is not that cheap either. So uh, I mean, that could also be a reason. I mean, you probably need a, a, your company to to uh, to pay for it. Uh, maybe not. It's not easy to pay for it yourself. But I mean, if you compare it to the sounds trainings, it's uh, it's not that expensive. No, yeah, I, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember the cost of it. But but like uh, yeah. another entry level search, not yeah, it's sort of entry level. Is the Comtia? I don't know how to pronounce it. Comtia. That's what I say. Uh, like Network Plus and Security Plus. And I mean, those are I would consider them sort of entry level, um, or like junior search. But they're they're amazing. I mean, it shows you have a baseline baseline knowledge. So I mean, there's nothing negative about it. So I, I uh, yeah, I highly recommend people to if you get the the chance to uh, take an exam and get a cert for something, just do it. It's never going to hurt your chances unless you apply for this company that I'm not going to mention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So Palo says every everyone has to start somewhere, and exactly, I I agree one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. It's, uh, I mean, you start somewhere, and uh, I mean, you're, you're, how much time you want to spend for it uh, with it, and how much uh, private time you want to spend with with security. That's kind of where it's gonna get you. It's, um, uh, under, how much time do you spend, uh, like on your personal time, like doing custom develop uh, develop yourself, uh, new trainings, uh, testing things, and and so on. I spend a fair amount of time, not as much as, as I used to because of like family and I have two kids at home now. So it's uh, that takes a lot of time, but I, I used to spend more time. Um, I wish I did more. I wish I did more stuff like hack the box or CTFs. Um, there's a new, there's a new, there's a new beta of something like blue team, something labs that I want to check out. So I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to get an invite for that thing eventually. Um, Maybe we should pass some links. Uh, I was thinking, I mean, uh, some things that we have talked about. Like, uh, if you want to post a, uh, the video on, on YouTube, maybe we can add some links to some yeah. stuff at least. Oh, I actually, I, I, can remember. I didn't mention that, but this, I mean, this live stream will be uploaded to YouTube uh, tonight or maybe tomorrow. So, I mean, if, if you didn't watch the whole thing or you want to like catch up or something, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, later and, and then I also strip down to just pure audio and put it out as a as a podcast. Uh, and I've never done a podcast before, so I have to learn how to do that. So probably Sunday, I suppose, or Monday. Yeah, I have no idea. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, not that it's not that it's anything specific, particular, but this is my next Windows internals. I have to read this. I think we have part two. I think. <laughs> it hasn't even been released yet. How do you have it? No, no. <laughs> oh, maybe it was the same thing. Uh, it could be the same thing. Uh, See, you have more connections than I do. I need your. Yeah. This, it, this no, is why you become an MVP, right? Because you get the preview of books. It was the older one. It was uh, Windows Internal 6. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> all right. Never mind then. Too bad. <laughs> it was an old one. Oh, yeah. Try Hack Me. Yeah, I have to look at that as well. I have act never actually even logged into that. Um, so, I mean, we do yeah. we, we do blue team stuff, like defensive side stuff. But in my opinion, like the better you are at the off offensive stuff, the more you can defend against it. So I think you need to... It's much easier to understand. I mean, you see different uh, different ways of attacking. I mean, the sneaky, some sneaky stuff maybe that you can develop a hunting query for. But actually, uh, uh, something I did, uh, uh, I think it was last year, uh, was to... Uh, I mean, some people posting on Twitter... Um, it was a way to uh, uh, to disable Windows event log, the security log, uh, by uh, modifying a, a registry key. Um, yeah. So I like posted a reply to that, like this is how you can handle for that. Um, and we, uh, me and Stefan wrote a, like a blog post on how to uh, um, how to hunt for it properly and, and so on. And uh, um, now we notice like someone else like referring to the blog post, like this is how you turn off the security event log then. Well, that wasn't our intention with, with the blog post. That it wasn't it wasn't us that actually discovered that way of, of modifying the uh, uh, the event log. But it was uh, yeah. Sometimes uh, yeah. Some sometimes people are going to use the, the information in a different way than you in, intended to. Yeah, exactly. Just like Cobalt Strike is only used for pen tests, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Um... So how much time do you have? I mean, we're just speaking for an hour and ten minutes. Uh, I got time. So if you have to drop out, just we'll we'll we'll. Yeah, well, I can I can do a few more minutes. I'm not sure if my family is looking. I mean, my little girl, I'm four years old. Oh, daddy's on TV. Oh <laughs> yeah, my. <mine> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's a celebrity now. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think that's sort of like because I wrote down a little small pieces of stuff too. So, right, let's let's go back half an hour in time uh, to threat hunting. Like, yeah. if you're because I think it takes a pretty mature organization to have someone who does threat hunting, uh, or you have it outsourced to uh, like an external company or or a SOC or something. So, like, why? This is such a hard question, but why should you threat hunt? And that's, I mean, like the, the answers we got in, in the chat window previously, it's like, I mean, find the, the hidden stuff and find the, like the malicious behavior or inside a threat or whatever it might be. Um, but uh, sometimes I, I notice when talking to customers about, I mean, when we do like evals and, uh, and stuff, and uh, it's one way, like, I mean, you get all this uh, advanced detections in the tools and... Uh, and but then you can do a lot with threat hunting. It's like, um, uh, here's your tool that do a lot of detections, and here's this kind of big job you need to to spend with it. Um, but that's, I mean, it's up to all organizations how much time. I mean, they will increase the security a lot by just moving to an EDR solution from a, like a regular AV. Um, but in, uh, uh, I think it's still important that they kind of. If they don't have like their own security department, maybe it's, I mean, it's that guy and he's doing like server operations and uh, one day a month he's doing security. Um, they need to give that guy or girl uh, the time to, to actually work with the security stock, how to learn the tool uh, and how to work with the tools. Because uh, one thing uh, that we kind of need to avoid is having these awesome capabilities to just become a new tool in the, in the arsenal. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to like change the way of you how you work, uh, and that's regardless of I mean of the brand of the tool. You, when you get a new tool, you need to change the way to adapt to the new tool, and um, I, I think that's a, an important thing to um, uh, to embrace. To uh, I mean, and threatening that's a new capability, and I, I think for myself, I think it's 
it, it's great when an organization can actually adopt that and start working with it, even if they start with a, like the lower maturity um, uh, level and then, uh, but if they have like a roadmap how to evolve the threat hunting, I think they kind of need to really push that. But they also need to, to get the management to understand that they need to invest t- uh, both, I mean, money for the resources for it and, and so on, or, um, or uh, outsource it to, to, to an external company. Yeah, because um, yeah. I, I mean, the the custom detections and I mean the threat hunting. You will you you can see things that it's impossible for the vendor to uh, to uh, to see if it's malicious or not. Because it's I mean it's very customer specific or organization specific, and that's it. It's impossible to write a generic uh, detection rule for that. Yeah, absolutely agree. So I mean, I I'm I'm the same as you, looking at various. Uh, organizations so like one custom detection that's really good for one organization you run that against another and you get a bunch of false positives uh it doesn't work so you have to like fine-tune that one into into specifically for that organization um so um do you use and i know there was a chat uh, a question in chat like way way earlier do you use any any other like other tools outside of Microsoft for threat hunting. Um, I've I've thought about that question because and I didn't really come up with something apart from like open source intelligence stuff. But that's yeah, that's really that's a threat. One thing to no, I I for for me at least I see that like uh, enriched enriching the data. Yeah, um, sure. To get more insight, um, and of course I mean if you look in uh, in in sample for example and you add other sources than, um, I mean, the things that you get in the XDR, uh, like identities and stuff. Um, but uh, maybe have some firewalls that you can correlate with and, and so on. But, and also the uh, the Jupiter, so you can actually hunt between and cross platform and, um, um, and you can uh, do it by code. Uh, so that, I mean, that's one thing, but it's still Microsoft. Um, so for me, at least, I, I think Microsoft is, uh, I mean, they provide a Great tools, great. I mean, the, the speed to, to pull the data at least. And I know some other vendors are like when you do like well, hunting or, or similar activities, you're actually pulling the data in runtime uh, and asking the clients like, give me this data. Uh, but now we have all the data in the back end, so that will speed up the queries and we won't like, uh, trigger a lot of jobs on the endpoints um, either. So I think that's. Uh, um, I mean that's one uh, huge benefit uh, from from the work that that we do. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so I, th- I think that's uh, and you you always learn. I mean, I mean you see uh, some some talk uh, on YouTube, and it's like, oh, maybe I can hunt for that. Yeah. And then you kind of try to do the same thing that they did in the video to trigger the uh, uh, the data, and then you kind of looking for. For I actually tried to draw my my own threat hunting, like the process on developing new queries. Uh, you have the hypothesis, um, and then you kind of see in which table you have the data and, and so on. And then from there on, you, uh, how, uh, I mean, it's working for me. Um, I, I move like uh, a step back to say, all right, are the, is it similar data in other tables? And then I fine tune the query and then uh, Kind of expand uh, like uh, uh, one one more level to say, all right, will this trigger false positive? Do I need to filter things out and, and so on before I kind of set it market as uh, like a, a completed query? Um, of course, I mean that process doesn't work all the time, but at least when I try to come up with a completely new detection or something like that, it's, you have like a your your process on uh, finding a new yeah. A new and- I do sort of the opposite, of, as, like you do, uh, if I understood you correctly, because I start very broad. Like I start collecting stuff on a very broad level, like just search, and then I see, yeah. and like okay, so okay, we got this. Uh, it's like it's ten thousand hits, right? And then I just narrow it down. All right, three thousand. All right, and narrow it down even further. So I go, I start with it very broadly, and then I just narrow the scope more and more and more to until eventually I have something that I can uh, like. Be happy with basically. Um, 
the search option. I mean, that's like the the savior. I and know. I mean, you can, and uh, I mean, you you can take. I mean, if you don't want to search in all tables, you write a table, tab it, then add search and search for a string. And uh, uh, the good thing is, I mean, if you do a wider search with, I mean, targeting all tables, um, you can see which tables that will have the data you're after, uh, and then you can narrow it down using only those tables to. Uh, to speed up the query and I mean all the things with using has uh, versus contains it's like uh, I'll start with contains because yeah you need to know the difference know between it. contains and hash a uh, container hash yeah <laughs> I, um, I usually I mean I, I usually start with contains and uh, then move to has if I think that it's gonna work in the like in, in the in, in the in the wider scope mm. uh, but it's so many th- maybe we should do like a threatening session it sounds like that uh, but yeah, it's, we uh, it, it, I mean, and also the external data. When I discovered that, it was like, ooh, now we can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, uh, for instance, I mean, a classic thing that we ask for customers, I mean, can we can we search for all the devices or users in this AD group? All right, and we don't have any connections with with, uh, with on-prem Active Directory. So, um, but we have external data. Uh, I mean, so... I mean, there are different options that you can do. Uh, I mean, using the API, there's so many things. You can almost do everything you can do in the portal with the API. Um, and um, uh, so you can actually have a, like a automation job on-prem, like uh, pull the members of a group um, and uh, add a tag, for example, like uh, group X on all the devices in, in that AD group. Um, but from you have another option with external data, and that's uh, you can you can push files to uh, National Storage Blob, and then you can access that from the hunting. So you can actually, even if the Storage Blob is not publicly available, and you need some authentication to uh, to uh, uh, like you know, well, of course you need to have an authentication in string, um, um, but at least you can get it, and you don't need to have it public available. And you have like if you find a I see GitHub repo. You can uh, just pull the data from there in in runtime. That's awesome. Yeah, we should do. We should demo this, which is going to be awful for a podcast. So we should do it on a on a non yeah. non Friday, like an extra. No, episode. we do it in a podcast. Like, <laughs> like we need to be very visual in our explanation. Yeah, that's that would be that would be the worst podcast ever. I think. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, but just going back, I like when you. Forming a hypothesis, like the way I see threat hunting is also in two ways. Like either I do like threat hunting on historical data that was previously unknown. So like if if something gets added as an IOC today, then it wouldn't have alarmed yesterday, right? So I can just query for, for new IOCs on historical data. And then the other way is like forming a hypothesis. And like if I was an attacker and uh, I had persistence, and I just wanted to exfil stuff. I might do it uh, via like Dropbox. All right, so I'll, I'll I'll search for that then. All right, nothing, and then I just do something else. And um, like even if my even if my threat hunt results in zero queries, it doesn't mean it's a failed hunt. I still save it. I'm like this should work. So if this triggers, uh, that's bad. And then I just save it as a custom detection and just go from there. Um, Exactly. Especially if, I mean, if it's a new on the query, um, sometimes I, I, uh, I try to like develop it in the lab so I can, uh, um, I mean, so I can trigger the data to really fine tune the, the query. But I mean, uh, you, you're totally right. Uh, I, I definitely agree. And uh, the, um, uh, and that's kind of when you do your custom detections and uh, the first time it's triggers like, all right, so is it a false positive or is it uh, uh, is it a, a real alert? And uh, so it's kind of like exciting first time you, you get a hit on a rule. Um, and sometimes you're like, oh, what was this rule? And you need to dig into the data and decide if it's uh, it's a, if it's a false positive or not. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, uh, a false positive is not a, like a bad thing. Um, it's just, I mean, for that specific scenario, it was a false positive, but it could be like the day after it's... Uh, you're hitting a, a really good detection of it. Yeah, I, I hate it when I write something uh, like a, th- a threat hunting query that I think is good and it results in zero hits. I'm like, 
did I do something wrong or is, is it really zero hits? Like that's, yeah, yeah, okay. It's, you have to be Should have been pretty sure. Or in this one. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I just add some, some arbitrary value. I'm like, okay, so I got a hit. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll just yeah. remove this again. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I had, well, uh, I mean, uh, of course, when you, when you do filtering on like URLs, for example, and then you get a scenario where uh, it's a UR, new URL being triggered at, I mean, it should really be a, a detection, but then you realize, all right, this is actually normal behavior, but you didn't, you weren't aware about that specific URL, for example, and uh, you just change it and move on. I agree. Awesome. Like, I think we've covered the topics that we sort of talked about before. Did we forget anything? This yeah. went into... It sort of went back and forth from non-technical to technical and then finished off with quite technical in the end here. So uh, it's it's an interesting flow. At uh, least we mentioned that DEFCON was cancelled last year, which is very important. <laughs> yeah, let's see if it gets cancelled this year. I think it yeah. might be. Probably. <laughs> Every year it's cancelled. Yeah, that was also, I actually didn't mention that, but I mean, can you imagine me first time going to DEFCON and you, I see the note, I definitely is cancelled. I know. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you're, you're a noob. It's, it's just like that. You it's, fell for uh, it. But I, I went anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. But yeah. I, I, I went anywhere. I mean, I had to play <laughs> the flight ticket. So it's, <laughs> uh, and then I noticed it's not cancelled. So it's, uh, it was perfect. So when you when you get accepted to the DEFCON, what's the what's the perks? Do they pay for the plane ticket? Do they pay for the entrance fee? Do they pay for the hotel? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, we have another Swede who was doing a really awesome. Um, uh, Ulfriskus did the uh, attack, uh, DMA attacking the colonel. He's and amazing. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if he got because he was sort of on the like the main stage, sort of with like two tons of people. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I can't remember um, in in social engineering, I think it was like four hundred. Um, um, but I I had to pay for it myself. Um, but you can actually, I mean, if you're um, if you're a speaker at the conference, uh, there are some. I mean, you can do it on the tax declaration. Actually, uh, I I call them and and ask them, and they said, yeah, the, if you add it as a speaker, it was okay. So that's um, sweet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it was uh, I paid for it myself initially, so uh, that was just like a bonus that I uh, could get the money back uh, or at least some of it. Um, but the uh, but otherwise, uh, I think it's I'm not sure on the old villages, and I'm not sure how it is at um, I mean the, the years after that. Um, uh, but for me, uh, they didn't pay for it. I'm not sure if it's like uh, because it's a village, and maybe it's different between different villages and so on. But I, I really love the uh, the social near village. I mean, real amazing people, and uh, Chris is doing a great job with that uh, the social near community. And uh, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I re really recommend reading his books as well. It's uh, yeah, it's a really nice guy. What's it? What's his full name? Uh, you know? Chris Christopher Hadnagy. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so do you have any talks or like events or something coming up, like virtually or not? Uh, we actually did a live response session last week, me and Stefan Schörling, uh, on the Nordic Virtual Summit um, with, with demos and stuff. Uh, so actually, pretty fun demos. We did the um, live response with uh, Memory Dump using a WinP Mem Dump um, and um, and then uploaded the memory dump to Azure Storage. And there, it's a community developed script. And uh, we made some changes to it um, and uh, just to simplify it a little bit for, for the demo purpose. Um, nice. That was last week. And uh, I mean, uh, so is, is that I available think, on YouTube? Or is I it don't private? Think so um, I don't, it wasn't recorded. Uh, Okay. Um, so maybe something maybe something we can do for for the Swedish community or something. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say I was gonna add it to the to the YouTube comments later, but then yeah, I'm not going to add it because there's is nothing nothing to add. <laughs> I know the slide from from the Sans event uh, is available at the Sans website, and um, the um, uh, there are some other. Sometimes I just publish it. Um, the um, uh, I, I remember before the uh, last summer when like uh, it was like uh, 
are the events going to happen or is everything going to be cancelled? I was like signed up for, I think it was three different events. It was uh, one event in Norway and then like the day after it was uh, somewhere else. And then it's a few other days after it was uh, uh, an event in, in Belgium. It was uh, like a road trip sort of and uh, everything was cancelled. Like, uh, I, I was really looking forward to those events. Um, uh, but the uh, yeah, I mean the, the pandemic. We need to like uh, listen and I mean uh, be responsible and everything. So it's uh, yeah, uh, I mean... that was sad news. But uh, I noticed that a lot of the events are turning into virtual now, just to to host events. So yeah. um, and the virtual events is much easier to travel to. <laughs> yeah, you just go downstairs, right, to the basement. <laughs> exactly. So. Um... What's like if anyone wants to reach out to you or like read more about you? I I've I've linked your Twitter account in the uh, in the overlay here, so that should be quite obvious. I'll link it in the descriptions as well. Do you have a blog, right? As well? Yeah, it's uh, blog.sec-labs.com, um, and uh, that I've had with uh, with a with a friend and a colleague, um, and uh, Stefan Schöling. Um, he knows a lot more <laughs> about the MVP stuff than I do. Um, uh, but the um, so that's like the primary thing, or uh, ping me on LinkedIn or um, anything. I mean, um, I'm always happy to, to talk to other people, so it's uh, just reach out to me if there are any questions or anything. Yeah, I'll, I'll link it as well in, in every place I can. So that's yeah, goes, can that goes for like you and me both. I mean, we love to help people, like, I, I and I don't ever expect anything back, I just I, I don't do it to gain anything. I do it just to help whenever I can, basically. And that's that's what Being the hero of the day. Yeah, I mean, sort of. Like, it could be like small things, but I, yeah. So that's what this show is for as well, just to help what we can help with, right? So I'm going to force you to be back on again on some later episodes, just so you know. Of course. Yeah, and um, I really wish you the, the best with the show. And, I mean, it's a great initiative and uh, I guess keep on sharing with the community that we will do and i'll have you on again uh in the near future um like there was way more viewers than i actually expected because it was just some some random idea i got last week um uh, <clears throat> so thanks everyone for like being active in chat it's it was interesting to to interact i mean i'm a i'm new to this so i'm, I'm learning as we go basically uh, i didn't want to open like the uh, the chat window and like see if the it was it was supposed to be a lot of people. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be scared. And, uh, <laughs> I didn't look at it at all. Nah, no worries. All right, thanks everyone for being for watching and like being active on the chat. That was awesome. Um, well, it's airbrushing next time. Yeah. So you have an you have an you have an extra interest apart, outside of security, and that's behind you. Are you about to close the show now? <laughs> no. Well, well yeah, this is good. Uh, I was, but no. Let's let's uh, talk about. Interest yeah. outside of out like security. Yeah, because you get a I, new. Um, you I get... have a daughter. Uh, she's four years old and loves to like draw and paint and stuff. So I thought, oh, maybe I should get. I mean, uh, get some better pens and uh, to make it more fun to uh, to actually draw stuff with her and, and, and so on. So um, I thought maybe an airbrush, and I thought, then we can do it together. And um, um, so I actually went to. Yeah, I can't remember the story, but buying this uh, very cheap kit, uh, airbrushing kit, and just to see, and a compressor to see if I was uh, enjoying it and so on. I noticed instantly, like, I need to uh, sit by myself. So I was actually sitting outside our house in the middle of the winter, freezing to death. And, uh, and then I moved actually to, to the sauna. So I'm actually painting sauna now. Uh, but I, I thought it was going to be much harder than it was. I mean, it's not easy uh not at all but uh, kind of shading and stuff was kind of automated since it's uh like uh, airflow and, and and so on so uh, it's what it was kind of fun so i actually started to like see some youtube videos to to see uh, so how do they actually do this how do they paint portraits and, and so on so i started to do some paint i'm not sure if you can see it in the in the background uh, uh here uh, my last picture um, I tried to draw the, like the you know the the fun rate be ninja cat stuff. It was very hard drawing like the cat thing. Uh, so maybe I'll catch, I can share like the new version 
afterwards. But uh, yeah, it was it was actually kind of fun to to have a hobby that's outside technology. Uh, uh, so I, what I've done just to keep it with like an interest with my daughter is that I, I uh, sketch up the the drawing uh, with her and, and stuff, and then I uh, when she goes to sleep, I go to uh, go out and do the or something. Uh, but I mean. It, I really enjoy it and I haven't been painting since school and uh, it's kind of fun picking it up again. Yeah, I've seen your stuff and I'm impressed. I mean, I can't even draw stick figures, so I got absolutely no no design uh, skills whatsoever. So I think it looks cool. I got a, I got a bigger view than I on just, the stream, but I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it was fun. I, to be honest, I was surprised myself uh, that it's actually looked like it. Uh, a human or something or a wizard and uh, um, of course I didn't draw it from from my mind um, I was looking at the picture and, and tried to draw it uh, like a similar thing um, but yeah I mean uh, it, it was very fun and uh, uh, I'll keep on doing that so uh, maybe we should start like uh, skip the stickers on the laptops and do custom painting instead Ooh, maybe air, that's a new thing airbrush on the laptops that's, that would be awesome yeah on the right side and it's on the screen or something. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah. So maybe, maybe it's something we should try to get to the next event when we, when it's uh, like a physical event. Uh, to have like a booth where, with airbrushing. I mean, airbrushing on, on consoles is a thing. So why not on, on laptops, right? So like airbrushing on like PS4s or PS5s or, or, or Xboxes. So we, can, we can draw the CEH logo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to piss people off. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you wanna to add, Matthias? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you some uh, some ideas for for the next. Um, oh. But I don't have an, anything else right now except for maybe a family that missed me all the like the Friday thingy, uh, <laughs> the tacos and stuff. It's waiting for you. So, so uh, in chat, Astron85 says, start airbrushing Chromebooks. You should do that. Run the Fender ATP on a Chromebook? Yeah. Maybe we can. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, um, uh, uh, yeah, it's actually funny. I, I have a spare laptop that I don't use, uh, really. So I will actually try on that. So maybe I'll, I'll post a picture. Um, it won't happen in like the coming weeks. Uh, but uh, my plan is to average that. Um, I'm waiting for some colors to get here uh, to Sweden. Um, yes, yeah, so it's... Uh, so so next, time yeah, the, like, next time you're on the show, you, you're you going to have to uh, show it up to the, to the camera, right? Awesome. Awesome. Right, I should... I think we should wrap up and go have some family time, right? What do you say? I agree. And uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it, this was really fun. And I mean, the perfect thing to do on a Friday evening. Absolutely. Thanks for coming to the the very first uh, show. I mean, uh, I, I thought I had set everything up and then like two minutes before I was going to go live, I'm like, oh, I need to do this and this and this. So it, I think it went well, unless, unless we sort of messed up and we get to learn about it in like after we sign off. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm happy. And thanks, man, for coming. It was, it was awesome. Thank you for having me and starting this for the community. No problem. Take care. Right. See you guys. See you. Bye.
check the URL.